Hi everyone, today is March 4th, 2021. Um, everyone has been asking for an update as to what is happening with the phase two expansion on Baffin Island. So I thought I would give everyone a little update. Um, as of yesterday, March 3rd, the Nunavut Court of Justice um, went in favor of Baffin Land and said okay to Baffinland to keep the Inuit guardians, protesters, hunters, whatever you want to refer to them as, to keep them off of the Mary River land site where the iron ore is being extracted. And the court also stated that if they were to go back to the mine with the intent of protesting again, that RCMPs would RCMP officers would be waiting for them to arrest them. This is crazy if you think about it, especially given Canada's history and their relationship with how Indigenous people all over Canada have been treated time and time again, and how the RCMP has always been used as a tool to ensure that Canada's interest is protected. And in this case, and in most of the cases, it's always about corporations. We can even see this if we start talking about legal personhood and what constitutes as a legal personhood in Canada. And you will see that corporations even have the upper hand when it comes to who or what a legal person is. It is very unfortunate and very heartbreaking to see that Inuit governing systems and legal systems are just put to the back burner on their own land. It's very disheartening because I don't think when the talks and the negotiations of the creation of Nunavut was happening, I don't think that anybody anticipated this. Any, nobody anticipated that in this new territorial state within the Canadian state, would be oppressing Inuit and putting their voices on the back burner more and more each and every year. And the reason why I say that is because under the Nunavut land claim, there are other Inuit organizations that are supposed to advocate for not only the people, but also the land and the animals, which was very important to have in the land claim because Inuit take a huge responsibility on protecting and speaking for the land, the waters, animals, everything within the natural world. So it's pretty heartbreaking to say the very least. It is also very heartbreaking because a lot of the elders are starting to feel that their voices aren't being heard or they are not being consulted with. And just that word alone, you know, being consulted with. There's no word in Inutituk that I know of that means con consultations as we understand it in English. And it's I can say this because a lot of people I have noticed are arguing that the mine and these Inuit orgs are translating English to Inutituk and vice versa. But a lot of people don't understand that there's a big difference between translations and interpretations, right? So how do you expect a society of older people who were all born in Igluvigaks and who grew up on the land and living one as the land, how do you expect them to understand all these new words that are constantly being created in the Inutituk language to cater to this whole new governing system that Canada introduced to us not that long ago. So sure, it may be true that all these meetings and these Inuit organizations and everything are doing these, quote, consultations, and it is being translated, but what about the interpretation? What's also very disheartening is that a lot of the Inuit elders feel that nobody is standing behind them. All these organizations and the younger generation aren't listening to them. And it's very evident. It's very evident 
to me because I haven't heard any of these organizations, QIA, NTI, ITK, come and talk one-on-one, eye-to-eye with these Inuit elders to listen to their voices, to listen to their concerns with the Phase 2 mine expansion. And an elder, Manatuk Bruce Thompson, actually said a very powerful quote to me yesterday, and she said, the land is our blood. If it dies, we will die as a people and we will become weak. This is very true. And it is very heartbreaking to me because this is the worldview that I have grown up with, that we are one with the land and the ecosystem, the animals, the waters, and everyone within our earth. So it also got me thinking our responsibilities as Inuit and Isaac Murdoch actually did a video last week on the topic of rights versus responsibilities. And it really resonated with me because Manatuk's quote that the land is our blood. If it dies, we will die as a people and we will become weak. It's very true. It's very true in our stories, in our language, in our ways of being. And it is a responsibility that Inuit have always felt. A responsibility to speak for the land and the waters, the animals, the ecosystem, everything. They cannot speak. We are here just as visitors, as guests, because we're only going to pass by. Well, all of these things are still here and will continue to be here long before us. So with that, it is very important that you know what the Inuit elders want, and I will give you a list. So first and foremost, they don't want the land to be ruined anymore. And this is very significant. It sounds so simple, but it's also so complex, as we have seen time and time again across Canada. Number two, they want phase two to stop. They do not want phase two to happen as they know all of the horrible things that will come with it. And again, it's not only going to affect Inuit, it's going to affect everybody. And you can call me out on that if you want. And if you think it's not going to affect you eventually, I really highly suggest that you start studying what climate change is and start looking at the world on how much the Arctic and the circumpolar manipulates the rest of the world. Number three, Baffin Land has proven themselves to be the wrong company to mine on our lands. And they have. Right now and over the past week, the month, we have seen Baffin Land time and time again come out and say all the things that they are doing one of which, one of their big, great things they are doing is giving money. But what is money going to do? Money comes, money goes, you can get money elsewhere. Money is not going to fix the damage that has already been done, that Inuit have started to see already happen. What are they going to do? Throw the money on the ground and say, fix yourself? I don't think so. Number four, if mining has to be done as approved, buy for the land claim, which is the Nunavut land claim. They want Baffin land to be replaced by a company who is respecting the land, ocean, animals, and the people. And here you can really showcase how the elders are not saying no to all these new modern ways of going into business and doing things and trying to survive in this whole new modern world that they have been thrown into. They just want to be, excuse me, in a reciprocal relationship where everyone sees eye to eye. Yes, it's not going to happen all the time, but you can at least try. So I think it is very significant that the elders are even making demands on what they want. It's very significant because Inuit are not normally like this. 
Inuit are very understanding, loving, and open, and are very open to their guests all the time. And anybody who has been to Inuit houses could tell you that too. So with that, I am very disheartened to see all of these Inuit organizations like ITK, QIA, and NTI just take a seat and just watch as we, a collective of Inuit, are trying to voice the concerns of our elders and of the land and the animals and the waters and we're not being heard. It is very scary, especially having studied land claims and treaties and the laws and human rights and everything. It's very scary to me to see history repeating itself with Inuit with what is happening right now. <clears throat> so it got me thinking that if Canada was really serious about reconciliation, whatever that means, because I still haven't seen it, I just hear about it all the time, or decolonizing or indigenizing and everything, why aren't they asking Inuit, not the organizations that have been set up by the colonial state, but Inuit just to talk, to do it Inuit style, you know? Why aren't they meeting halfway and just being open to sitting down and listening to what Inuit have to say with all of the knowledge that they possess and all of the research that has been conducted for a millennia that they can share. So, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I think it is very important to start making the Canadian state and all these ministers accountable. Where are they? I think... I like to think that we live in somewhat of a de democratic society, but I really don't believe that we do because I see no transparency even within the Nunavut government. So with that said, I call on all of the ministers within Canada to say something because you are there only because the people want you there. You have all been elected, including the Prime Minister. Why are you elected? Why would you take this very important job if you're not even going to do it? Why would a white man from Winnipeg, I believe, Dan Vandell, who is the Northern Affairs Minister, why does he have the ultimate say at the end of the day to decide our fate as people? as like it's almost like the future of us are in his hands and he has never lived up there long enough to even understand what it means to be there. So it's very mind-boggling to me that you have all these ministers and the Canadian state that just talk about rights and all these negative rights and all these human rights, but nothing ever happens. With that, I just want to finish that I think that we all have a voice. We all have the power to make change. There is something happening everywhere where Canadians live. We have seen this time and time again. And I think it is important that you start voicing your concerns because this is going to affect you. It is affecting you. Whether you see it right now or not, it is affecting you. So with that, I want to apologize for my very long video. And I highly encourage everyone to listen to Isaac Murdoch's little lecture on rights versus responsibility. He tells it so beautifully and so powerfully. And he really showcases on who Indigenous peoples are in Canada and how we view our responsibilities to the earth and to each other, including you. Koyanamit.